Workflows inside of close.com. What a fun video and topic because if you actually leverage this one the right way, you are going to make more money. You're going to put touch points on your leads faster. You're going to put more touch points on your leads. You're going to have less leads slipping through the cracks. You're going to be saving time for your sales team. Everything works better if you can do this right, depending on the context. Now, in this video, we're not only going to talk about just how to build workflows and the different parts and pieces to building a workflow inside of close.com in 2024, but I'm also going to show you two different workflows that I built for this the same exact motion, a 1.0 version and the 2.0 version, and how the lessons I learned from the 1.0 version made my 2.0 version two times better. I closed two times more deals, two times faster. So stick to the end of this video to see exactly how I did that. But first, my name is Sam Queen. Some people like to call me the Closed Doctor, and I help service-based businesses with high-ticket offers build foolproof sales operating systems so they never see a lead slip through the cracks. All right, here we are inside of one of my demo accounts. Don't worry about the workflows on the screen here. I'm not gonna walk you through any of those, but I am gonna walk you through how to build a workflow from scratch and then the different parts and pieces to them. When we click create a new workflow, we get to name our workflow first. So let's give this a name of opt-in. Maybe you have a funnel where leads opt-in and they don't book a call with you. Opt-in didn't book a call or they perform one action but don't perform another action. So opt-in didn't book a call. I'm gonna hit done. I'm gonna leave it as a manual trigger. I won't dive into it in this video because Zapier world starts to get really complex but close.com Zapier interface is very good and you can enroll leads and workflows off of really any trigger. In this case, we'll just leave the trigger as manual. If you want to make the trigger automated without using zaps, close does give you the ability to add an automated trigger based off of lead, custom field, a status, a contact, date created, their name, these addresses. None of these really make sense to be a automated custom field. The one that really only makes sense to me is the current status. Status. So the current status is any of new lead. If all new leads that come into your ecosystem have this status and you want them enrolled into this workflow, boom, you don't have to do anything inside of Zapier or manually enroll them. You can make this the automated trigger. And then what I think is nice is you can even then add, so we'll do trigger trigger of automated, you can even add a filter. So you maybe have a city that someone is located in and you only want, maybe it's a real estate offer and you only want these texts to go out to people in a certain market. Or maybe you have a custom field for your lead application question one, application question two, application question three here. Maybe this application question one is like, how much money do you have? A lot of money or a little bit of money and you only want this to filter to send to people with a lot of money that's what these automated triggers inside of close.com can allow you to do personally i build everything still inside of zapier i expect close to be doing a lot more work to this part of the interface within the years to come so let's leave this as a manual trigger other things to highlight before we get into building the actual workflow itself this is view goal on the top left count a conversion and pause the workflow when receiving from an enrolled contact, incoming email, SMS, or call. So if the contact is in the workflow and they email you, they call you, or they text you, it's gonna stop the workflow. It's gonna stop all the next pieces of communication from going out. Where this is a little funky is if you have a call step in your workflow and you're dialing leads, dial, dial, dial. You're picking up the phone. You're calling through all your leads. If they pick that phone call up, it will not stop the workflow. And that's because these are all incoming, not an outbound answered message. So one really important thing to note, learn that lesson the hard way. Other thing up on the top right here is going to be communication schedule. So we can either, this is the default Monday through Friday, nine to four. We can send on Sunday and Saturdays too, and we can change these times out, fall back default time zone as well. Any time would be any time. All right. So I think that's everything that's relevant up here the settings icon is just how you rename it boom add a step now depending on how you're building your workflow the use case what you're building it for is going to dictate whether you're going to email call or text someone i'm going to show you my workflow at the end of this video and how that one operates i do believe that one starts with a text so we'll start with a call here and say that every single time we reach out to a contact we want to call them first if you start with the text though you're not waiting on a sales rep to do that call and i'll show you how to not wait on a sales rep to make Make that call in the first place anyway but a lot of businesses they want to call people first other businesses they want to just increase the speed of the lead and have that text go out so we'll do a call step first it's going to be a required call step it's going to be assigned to whoever created it is it's a manual trigger so whoever enrolled them is going to be the one assigned to the call step and we could hit done 
boom, that's it. That's a required call step in order to go on to the next part of the workflow. Someone would have to make that phone call. Now we can also make it optional. So say we use Zapier to enroll a lead into this workflow and that sales rep is out of pocket for a full day, 12 hours or one day. And we still want the text to go out after, the email to go out after, even if that sales rep doesn't make that call, we can go optional, specify the time someone has to attempt the call before the workflow continues, allow one day. So we're gonna give the sales rep one day to make the call. If they don't make the call, it's still gonna go on to the next step regardless. So we'll leave it as that right now. Now we wanna send a text. We're gonna choose SMS. We can delay the SMS here as well. We can do no delay at all. So this would go out right after the call. I wouldn't do that. I would probably delay one hour. So we do a call, we drop a voicemail, it shoots them a text in an hour if they didn't answer. And what will that call be? We can make a new template. And in that new template, we wanna use good naming conventions because close.com doesn't have folders yet. So make sure you're naming your templates something that you'll remember. And then we'll do, hey, and we'll insert template tag. And we'll do contact first name. And then we'll do user from name, user first name here with company name. Tried to give you a ring earlier. Have five minutes to connect today. Save. So that just created it as a new template in my settings, but also added that template right here. I can hit done. And now our workflow, once we call them, if they don't pick up an hour later is gonna send them this text message. Where this I'm realizing doesn't make sense with this optional setup is if we don't call them, it would still send this text message. So the copy for this text message would make a lot more sense where this is a required call step. And there's a big difference between marketing and sales copy, right? Your marketing copy is trying to raise awareness, invoke an emotion. Your sales copy is not the same thing. It's coming from you as like a person. You're probably not the same representative as the company. Everyone knows what salespeople sound like. So you probably don't want to sound like every other salesperson with your sales copy, but you really do just want to be conversational. The goal that I always tell my sales reps of a sales copy or of workflows. I mean, heck it's the goal of workflows inside of close.com is we want Want something to come back incoming email incoming sms incoming call we want to start a conversation so we want our copy to prompt a response it doesn't have to be a response yes or no i'll buy your thing but it does need a response to start the conversation because the conversions are going to happen in the conversation so we'll add a step here we'll add an email step i'll just pull one of my no-show email sequences. I'll leave it as send as a new thread. We'll delay, it'll send this email one hour after it sends that text. I just tried to call you but could not reach you. Assume something must have come up, right? This copy doesn't make 100% sense for whatever workflow. That's because I'm making this workflow up. I'm really just trying to show you how to build the workflow. So obviously make your email template whatever you want it to be. We'll add another step. We'll do another call. We'll delay one day. We'll do optional call, allow one day. Here's something to note this is where things start to get a little tricky if we delay the call one day from the email this is 24 hours later and we allow it to be optional one day that's another 24 hours so the next step may not go out if i leave this like this and then i put in an sms step i'll just choose a random one here I put an SMS step. This step right here may not go out for 48 hours, but it may go out 24 hours. It really depends on when this call is being made. It's optional. If this was required, this next step would never ever go out. Leaving it optional delay one day is a 24 hour delay optional one more day to allow the call to continue is another 24 hours. This text could go up anywhere between 24 to 48 hours later. And if you want to know the days that everything is still going out as hit save and then come back to your workflow and look at the overview tab. And you'll see that all of this is happening on day one, day one, day one, this call happens on day two. And then I think this next text step I put in there had a three day delay and that's why it's showing day five. So you'll start to get confused as you build these out on what days things are happening. So you can always just go to the overview tab to check that out. Other things inside of a workflow you can do is assign user or assign task. So call, email, text, and communication stuff, all that makes sense. But you can also assign a user and assign a task. Why would you ever assign a user in the middle of a workflow? Some use cases I've thought of that I use that I really love is having a system of your A players and your B players. You've got your A team members where you want to have those first calls because you know those first calls have the highest conversion windows and you got your B players where you want them to make the second calls because you're 
second calls. Call three, call four, call five are not as good for the business. Calls one and two, probably higher pickup rates. I'm sure we could look at the numbers or there's an article out there that would prove that to be true. If we want to maybe assign our A team to be the first round of callers, and then we want to round robin assign a B team, we could do an assigned user step. Once again, you can do the delay. You can choose the field that you want to assign, and then you can do random assign as well. So we'll assign user overwrite existing, and then we're going to do a random user. And this random user can be from a user group that you've created inside of settings team management inside your close account. So now we've assigned a new user and the next text that goes out will be from that newly assigned lead owner instead of the previously assigned one. Maybe when leads dry up so much, you know, they get assigned to the one admin account and the one admin account does everything and sends out emails in a workflow. I can't think of too many other use cases. The A team, B team is the best one that I have that I actually use, but you can assign a different user in your workflows. And the last thing you can do is assign a task. At the end of workflows, I like to have this task show up in someone's opt-in workflow ended next steps maybe this is changing a lead status to like dry lead or not qualified changing their opportunity status depending on what your workflow is but the task ending up in someone's inbox to just say like hey something has to happen with this lead look inside figure out what the context is what are the next steps the sales rep can take them from there or you could have once again this workflow ending automate something inside of zapier and have everything triggered from that end as well all right so i do believe that feels like a pretty solid demo of how to build workflows inside of close.com. Now I'm going to hop inside of my other account that I actively have a sales team working inside of, show you a 1.0 version and a 2.0 version of different workflows that we've built and the difference in the results by just putting a little more intention behind them that we saw. All right, here you see my 1.0 version of a Facebook group follow-up. So this motion was built for when new members joined a Facebook group, they would get thrown into this workflow where it would round robin the lead owner, it would send them a text, give them a call, Call, shoot him an email, send him a text, give him a call, send him a text, give him a call. It was five days long. We had to do three calls. There were three texts in there. There was one email. When this workflow was originally built, it was kind of like a bull rush speed thing. We got to get something in place. We got to get touch points on these leads. We really don't know what this motion looks like. It's completely brand new. Let's get it built. And I was pretty novice, I would say, to building workflows at this point in time. And I'll show you what I learned through this process. But this workflow you see was five days long. It only had one action taking place on the first day, one on this second, one on the third, two on the fourth, two on the fifth. None of that even makes sense. There's no rhyme or reason behind it. If I go into the workflow itself. So looking at this workflow, the way it was originally built, I don't know, feels all right. feels good. They're going to get a text when they first join. And we're going to say, Hey, we saw that you just got into the Facebook group. We're even referencing a free resource that they got when they answered one of their membership questions. We bring that in as a custom field and we add that custom field to the template. So now the text is personalized to that person outside of just the name. Then it waits a call. We made this I believe a required call step brutal decision terrible decision I really wouldn't recommend you do this depending on your use case and that is because a required call step if you have sales reps that aren't doing their job or prioritize other things in their day this lead will never see the light of sun ever again. They will never see another text message. They will never see another touch point if the sales rep doesn't get into this workflow. If they start to pile up all these calls, never again. This lead will never get a touch point. So I started to always make them optional. And I'll show you what that looks like in the 2.0 version. The biggest lesson I learned here is that a workflow is going to do the work for you. It's automated. It's the technology doing the work. So build it deep. Build it really, 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 really deep. Don't have call steps be required and let the machine kind of do its thing. So here are the results of that workflow. The big thing to look at here is going to be the 77% of goal met and then four days average time to goal. So it took four days on average to get in touch with a lead through this motion. I'll show you the reports now for our 2.0 version before I show you what the 2.0 workflow looks like so you can connect the dots and see how much better it was. Here we are, Facebook 2.0 workflow. We have 100% of people meeting our goal in a two day average time to goal. So we increase the response rate and the speed at which they respond by two times. Starting conversations within 48 hours versus 96 hours, did the math. 
quick enough along the way. So let's go into the overview. Look how deep this workflow goes. It is over 17 days this workflow takes. It is 20 steps. It's a busy, busy, busy workflow. You see on the first day alone, there is a text, there is a call, there is an email, there is a text. All on day one, there is that much communication. And the copy that we wrote, I enrolled myself into this workflow and every single time I got this text, I was like, oh my gosh, who is this texting me? Like, what do they need? Who is texting me? What is this person? Clearly they wanna help me, they wanna give me something. The copy itself is really, really good in how it flows. So let me walk you through that. Manual trigger, it says inside of here, that's gonna be actually Zapier that's triggering it. It is not manual. First text message, hey, contact name, lead owner here with company name, just saw you got into the Facebook group, did the free resource you requested, custom field of the resource, hit your inbox. And then it says, if you'd like me to stop texting you, reply stop at any time. That's the TCPA compliant language that we wanna use when it comes to making sure that we're following all the spam regulations. Then it says, delay one hour, optional call 12 hours. So we want the call to just happen in an hour in our perfect world, but if it doesn't happen within 12 hours, it's still gonna send the next email. And that next email is also welcoming them to the Facebook group and we're asking them a couple of questions that they could answer or ideally get back in touch with us to hop on a phone. So now if we've sent the text, we've made the call and we're supposed to the email delayed an hour, this next text, wait two hours, all of this could happen within five hours. You could have four touch points within five hours. So this is a delay two hours. Let me know, we try to pair every new group member with the resource to get them started. Conversational. This is not marketing copy. No marketer would ever write like that. This is someone like texting their friend. This is a follow-up to this text message that we sent them earlier. There's context here, right? So when someone reads this in their phone, it's gonna be like, oh, this person waited anywhere from three hours to 15 hours to then send me this text again. Why do I say three to 15? Because of this optional 12 hour delay. So we wait a day, we wanna do a call. Hey, did you get a chance to introduce yourself in the group is the next question we ask. This, I love this, no delay, back-to-back -back text steps, no delay. If not, I highly recommend you do. We typically see our most successful group members do this as quickly as possible. So the way this will read on someone's phone is gonna be text, text. Instead of one long text, it's gonna be two back-to-back. -back. Boom, boom. And I think it feels really, really natural when it lands on the lead's phone. Wait 12 hours, call, then the next text. What day are we on now with this text? Let's see in our overview. We're on maybe, maybe day two, maybe day three, number five. Gosh, it's so deep, I'm gonna get lost. Number five, sorry if the homework is coming too fast, haha, -ha. let's start with something easier. We can just start here, are you active real estate investor, are you brand new here? We wanna start conversation. We have nothing to sell this person. We're literally just trying to get them free resources right now, but we need to start a conversation. Delay four hours, contact first name, question mark. Love that text. Just their name with a question mark. Wait a day, call. Hey, contact first name. Have you heard of another resource that we have? I'd love to get it to you. Send them an email, testimonial email. Wait a day. Putting more ways to get content in front of them. Hey, if you like to consume content via video, check out the YouTube channel. Wait three days, some humor in here. I feel like Ross, the night Rachel stood him up on prom friends reference do you hate me i love this question when following up with people do you hate me no one hates you so they'll always reply back it's humor it's lighthearted for throwing in the joke as you can see though this is a much longer workflow i'm letting the machine do the work i'm not relying on the sales rep doing the work if they don't make the phone calls now of course i want them to make those calls and we definitely put a lot of emphasis on this notice there's only four calls inside of here that's because i see at least in, in a lot of my businesses outside of that fourth call that i'm making if i'm making them quick enough within in the first few days, I'm probably not going to get in touch with that person on a subsequent call. I might as well let text and emails do the thing and prioritize my phone resources for calls one, two, three, and four. It's probably gonna capture 90% of the activities on those four calls. If you're trying to triage leads or get in touch with a lead, 90% of them within four calls, you're gonna be able to get in touch with. So don't worry about call five, six, seven, eight. Cause now if you have call five, six, seven, eight, and you wanna put eight calls on every single lead, half of your sales rep's time is now being spent on call five, six, seven, eight, where maybe something like that makes sense is if you round robin a tier two, a lower tier, a B team of sales reps to facilitate those conversations. There it is for you. Workflowsandclose.com with real world examples showing you how I made a 1.0 version into a 2.0 version and the stats to prove how much better it gets. I didn't show you all the sales stats on the back end, but I can tell you we doubled revenue. We doubled the close rate. We used to close 2% of the leads that were coming through that motion and we're now closing 4.5 to 5% of the leads coming through that motion. A little bit more intent on the copy, a little bit more intent on the touch points and the speed, a little bit more intent on when we're making calls, why we're making calls, what calls are important. All of these things are learning lessons 
that we had to look at the data and go through to get to this point. So I hope this video helps you skip beyond those learning lessons and not have to learn them the hard way like I did. So you can start building bigger, better workloads for your business right now. Once again, if you're looking for a sales operator like myself or someone on my team to sit within your business to help build these workflows for you or with you, book a call with me or a team member on the link down in the description below and be happy to see if we're a fit. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.